Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands. I'm Pete, and today it's almost like we got the beer goggles on, seeing double. We got twins, Basil. We got two Can-Am Outlanders in here, but they're not identical twins. We got uh, Buddy Knowles. Uh, that's a 2020 Outlander 1000R. You know, just needs uh, regular maintenance. He left it with me, so. There's tons of videos of doing spill and fills on these things, you know, oil changes, so I figure there's no real point in doing that. But uh, the other one here belongs to our buddy uh, Stoiko. This is a 2016 850. You know, it, uh, it's the V-Twin. It's got a couple issues. There's something loose in the front end, and the uh, power steering's like it's on vacation. It's, uh, it doesn't work, so <laughs> we got to figure out what's going on with that. He usually runs the tracks and everything on this thing in the wintertime, so I think that might have something to do with whatever's loose in the front end. And, I mean, with these things, with the tracks on them, you kind of need that power steering working because they get a little stiff, you know. You used to rely on the original power steering back in the day, but now with these fancy new ones all have the electric stuff. You can just two-finger turn it. So we'll see if we can get that figured out. And I figure with these ones here, that one being a brand new or fairly new 1000, that one there, you know, a 16850, but we did put a power commander on that, and he's got the Yoshimura exhaust on it, so the little bit of power adders on there, maybe these things might be kind of comparable, you know? It's only 150cc difference, you know, they're both V-twins. Maybe we'll line them up and uh, see what happens. All right, well, Noel's machine, you know, it's a beauty machine, but it's basically bone stock it's got stock tires no major modifications to her but uh, it's a good clean machine and uh, these things are pretty sweet you know they they give you the you get two different keys you get the uh, a work one and a performance one so this one here you put that one in you don't get full throttle or nothing which you know probably for a guy like Noel be handy because put that performance one in there i told him when he got this you know take her easy these things are not like the old sportsman 500s and all that that we used to grow <laughs> have growing up and all that these things here got some serious jam you know that's a big hunting rig that thing will catwalk right out of the hole and uh yeah he put that performance key in like not even a week after one in this thing and barrel rolled are doing a buck 20. so i mean if you want to get yourself a four-wheeler that could take a beating yeah you know all he did was end up bending the front bumper turn the handguard into a floppy dog ear but uh, other than that i mean no real serious damage you know so hey maybe can and builds a pretty decent quad now stoico's on the other hand you know he doesn't abuse it anywhere near like noel does he's got the yoshi pipe on there and we put the power commander on it when we did the fix the motor on this back in the winter time there so i'm interested to see how the 850 with those upgrades would uh, compete with the 1000 i think he stands a chance of uh, roasting this thing. This one sounds way better than this one, too. But uh, Stoika was saying, you know, after uh, the winter time of having the tracks on there, there's quite a bit of wiggle going on here. So checking it out. And down there, that inner tie rod end. I don't know if you can see that, but she's got some wiggle going on. I thought it was the tie rod end worn out, but on closer inspection that whole stud is moving so i think all we got to do is uh put a 14 mil on the bottom side of there 19 mil or three quarter on the top tighten that up and uh, should be good for that so yeah just holding the stud with the 14 cranking the uh, top nut tight with the uh, three quarter and tighten this up that is what's all that's going on with it that I guess with the tracks on here, it puts extra load. You know, that backed off a little bit and got a little bit of play. So this is going to be a cheap, easy fix for Mr. Stoiko. Nice one. And now that that's tight, there is no slop in that wheel now. So now we can move on, figure out why the uh, electric uh, power steering is not working. Now, Elvis was saying that the steering on this thing was giving him some issues. So I think, you know, cycle her on here. <laughs> Look at that, Elvis, the quad king. <laughs> nice one. But uh, when you hit the uh, that button there, that's your reverse override, and it switches your power steering mode from minimum, medium, and maximum. So, I mean, when we cycle it, give it a click. There she goes, toggles the minimum, medium, max. But no matter where you toggle it, like this thing is just 
solid Armstrong, take it for a drive, it makes zero difference. It is not giving any power assist at all. So it's not like it's not getting signal because it's reading on the dash, all right. So we got to figure out what the heck is going on. Now, the only reason I figured I'd do a bit of a video on this power steering issue, because apparently these things are known for having issues with the electric power steering. So I, you know, researched it and it's like, hey, okay, check the fuses or whatever. Where's the fuse panels on these things? So a lot of guys say, oh, under the seat, there's supposed to be three fuses, which would normally be in that oval cutout there. And uh, this one, I guess, you know, it's got the Bluetooth <laughs> fuse panel because... Uh, yeah, there's no fuses there, and the DPS uh, fuse, which, you know, dynamic power steering, 40 amp fuse, is supposed to be in there. And the older models, I guess it is. I checked, Knowles took his seat off. He doesn't have that fuse panel either, so, yeah, where is this uh, 40 amp fuse? Now, the other fuse panel is supposedly under this guy, so you just kind of, where do we do? pull this off? There we go. Pull that off to the side. There's a fuse panel up under here. Pull this guy off of here. And then, uh, yeah, reading all those, none of those say anything about uh, electric power steering or DPS. So they say the fuse panel's supposed to be there. It ain't. The other ones right here, no fuses there. So it looks like we're on a uh, scavenger hunt here. We gotta find that fuse. All right, seeing as how there is no fuse panel there and they say it's supposed to be under the seat or whatever, I'm gonna pop this right side panel off, push pin there. There's a push pin up in there, I'll pull out and then I'll just pull that side panel out and take a look in there and see if there's a fuse panel in there. All right, both of those push pins are out, so I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a tug out of the way there. And then, uh... Let's just see if we can find anything. A little bit of light. Oh, there's a, there is a fuse holder there. I don't know what that's for, but let's check that out. Sneaky buggers hiding her down in here, eh? Pull that out. What do we got? Oh, we got a four, yeah, a 40 amp. Looks to be good though. Um, well, I guess we'll get a tester and check and see if we got power going there. I don't know if that's a main fuse or if it's the power steering fuse, but uh, we're gonna find out. All right, so just got the old style test light clamper on the battery there. Make sure the test light's working. Yes, sir. All righty, let's just have a gander here. We got the, oh yeah. Oh, she's constant power. Key's not even on or nothing, so we got power there. And would you look at that? We got nothing on that side. So, bingo, bango. All right, so yank that sucker out and chuck that over the shoulder in the garbage. Now, I don't have any of those uh, 40 amps, but I got a 35, which is close enough. I <laughs> mean better to put one in a little bit smaller than bigger at least we know we won't be melting anything down this will pop sooner than that 40 would if there was an issue so stick that fella in there i'll order the proper one it's just i don't keep any of these 40s in stock so we got power on that side power on that side i think we might be in business here where'd i put that cap yeah <laughs> oh great now i gotta find that Oh, yeah, you found her. Set her on the front rack. So, clip that back on. Stick it back in there. These panels here, they got the little flap that hit pivots there, so we just stick her back in there. Nice one. Couple of push pins. Get in there. Put the other one back in there, and then I think we can give her a go. All right, got it all buttoned back up, so let's... Uh... Let's check this out again. Let's make sure we still get the readout on here. I don't know if anything will change. Make sure there's no warning lights or anything. It says the DPS is still on max. Okay, we're good there. Let's crank her up. Oh, 
Oh, and we got power steering again. I would say that right there is a success. Yeah, that was just a loose tie rod. Tighten that up. Perfect. Fuse in there. Power steering's back up and going. Easy steering. Now we can uh, line these suckers up. Maybe do a little drag racing. Well, I mean, that was a simple fix, you know, a uh, faulty fuse. Wasn't really blown. I'm not sure a crack or something in it. But, uh, I mean, that right there was a <laughs> could have been a pain in the butt to find, you know. That's why you should always uh, use a test light or a multimeter. Check the fuses because if you just did the visual on that and be like, ah, it's fine. Carry on, move on to the next thing. You'd be pulling your hair out or drinking way too many beer wondering why the heck isn't this working, so... You know, now that we know it's all swapped out, she's back steering nice and easy. So, uh, yeah, nice one. All right, so now that Stoikos is all fixed up and ready to rip, I think what we should do is, uh, yeah, send it against uh, Knowles there. So I think it'd be a good comparison. I mean, that's a brand new 2020 Outlander 1000. Supposed to be like 90, 91 horsepower stock. And it is all stock. It's got stock 26-inch tires on her. You know, beer box on the back. It's really the only upgrade on this thing. So, uh yeah, go against this guy. Stock, those are like 78 horsepower, I think. But he's got the aftermarket air filter on it. He's got the Yoshimura exhaust and the Power Commander, which I think puts this up about 20 horsepower or so. So it should be comparable. Almost identical horsepower to the 1000. So, I mean, hey, bang for your buck. See what's going on. See if this 850 can roast a stock 1000. Who knows? Maybe we'll do some uh, top speed runs. I'll put the GoPro on. It's got the... Uh, the speedo built onto the app for that so I, i'll do some rips see what the top speed of each one is and then uh, see if i can find somebody to uh race me and uh, we'll do some drag race and see uh which one's better now Knowles is basically bone stock you know it uh stock exhaust and everything on her so when you fire this one up here it, uh, you know nice and quiet you can talk around it sounds like a typical four-wheeler drive it like a respectable human being, you know, it's not all in your face or nothing. nice and quiet you know when you're on one of those with stock exhaust you drive it you know pretty respectable tame you know but the stoic goes on the other hand with the uh the yoshi pipe on there it uh i don't know makes you makes your thumb a little twitchy like there's just something about the sound of that but i don't know makes every guy yeah, everybody's seen that video on facebook or whatever and sweet she's a new machine you know it's got tons of power and all that but the cool factor is already way up on that 850 just sounds awesome so now i think i'll strap the old brain bucket on put the gopro and uh we'll do a top speed run on the 1000 here noel uh, rolled it doing a buck 20 hopefully i don't roll it but uh, we'll see if we can do more than a buck 20 i don't know i'm not i'm not sure what these things top out at but we're gonna find out I think I saw 128 or flicker in 129 on the uh, dream meter, the speedo there on uh, Knowles. So, uh, yeah, that's for a big old hunting rig. It's moving pretty good. So, uh, let's, uh, let's try Stoikos. I got 
to say I'm kind of surprised, you know. Uh, this one here was kind of flickering 124, 125 kilometers an hour on the uh, Speedo. So the 1000, it was hitting 128, 129. This was hitting like a bit of a rev limiter or a governor or something. It's like, it just, that was all it had. It wouldn't go anymore. So I guess uh, top speed win goes to the 1000. So. Well, after watching the, uh, like, downloading the GoPro footage and putting the uh, Speedo sticker on that, I'm not sure what's more accurate, but, uh, yeah, that thing, the Speedo on it was saying it was doing 128, 129 flickering. But on the GoPro, not so much. It was only around the 124, 125-ish. And then uh, this one here... The Speedo was saying about 124, 125, and the GoPro app was actually reading pretty close to that, 124, 123. So, uh, maybe something weird's going on with that, I don't know. The, maybe those aren't stock tire size for that thing. I don't know, something's a little bit off, but uh, on according to the GoPro, these things are pretty close, almost a dead even match, so, uh, huh, who would have thought? I mean, they both dangle when you crack it, they pop wheelies, so... I don't know, let's see, maybe this has a little more lower end grunt. Maybe you could take it in a drag race. Let's see. All right, well, Knowles was the uh, slight winner in the top speed. So we got McLeanski over here, buddy Darren. He's going to do the uh, filming and arm drop us and see. But uh, we're going to see maybe in the short distance if Stoikos can uh, keep up with that one. I mean, they're basically even, and we're only going to be going down the McLeanski's dirt bike where it's parked there. So it's not like a huge distance, but I don't think we don't really need to do a full pull. We just want to see the bottom end, which one's quicker out of the hole, right? So yeah. <laughs> rubber side down, hopefully. <laughs> Let's see which one wins here. Hey, okay. not gonna stretch. <laughs> fixing stoikos and doing a little bit of heads up testing here uh, kind of surprised but i mean not really surprised the 1000 did inch it out both times both in the top speed and in the drag racing well, wasn't kind of thinking the lighter rider oh hey what's that supposed to be <laughs> lighter rider i'll give you one of those right there <laughs> so the 1000 you know it is a couple mile an hour or mile an hour we're a canadian couple kilometers an hour faster than the 850 and in the drag racing you know i don't know half a quad length you know in this short distance so all in all the 850 really isn't that far off the 1000 but i mean if you want the big boy go for the 1000 right yes. <laughs> yeah, the big boy <laughs> so always hope you enjoyed the video you know a little bit of a repair on that one and a you know a little bit of fun racing seeing how fast these things go but uh as always, thanks for tuning in. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And as always, take it easy. <laughs>